clutter in this shop. I gotta get rid of some of this crap. And you know what? Starting with YouTube. Bye bye, fellas. To the dumpster you go. <laughs> okay, fellas, here's your new home. <laughs> there you go. Hope you like your new house. Hope I never see you again. Bye. Oh, look at this. Fuck my lucky day. Somebody just threw away two good chainsaws. Oh, see if I can take them in. Maybe Terrell will get them tuned up for me. Hey, Terrell, what's up? Oh, hey, Slippers. Check it out. Let's pick these bad boys up. I was wondering if maybe you could uh, check them out for me. Oh, yeah, sure thing. Yeah, I uh, just bought these at Goodwill for a dollar. Really? They sell old chainsaws at Goodwill? Uh, yeah, they they got all kinds of stuff there. You'd, you'd be surprised. Because what a coinky dink that these chainsaws look just like the ones I threw in my dumpster about an hour ago. Well, they're definitely not from your dumpster, so... I mean, if you want to go out and look, I mean, you don't have to at all or anything, because they definitely didn't come from there, but... Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, they did make thousands of these saws, and they all do look the same, so... Chances are they're not the ones I just threw away. All right, Slippers. I'll take a look at them and see what I can do and give you a call. All right, well, if it's going to be over $10, call me with an estimate, okay? $10? I won't even buy an air filter. <sighs> oh. All right. Oh, well, this one's got a brand new air filter in it. Well, well there we go. So it's probably not going to be that much. All right, well, if it's anything major, just give me a call, okay? These aren't stolen, are they? No, no. I didn't get them from Ryan. All right. Pterodactyl here. And today's video is going to be on this. These here two stilch chainsaws that were found in the garbage. That's right, that opening skit is based on the true story of these saws. One of my customers found these in a dumpster from a construction company. There was all kinds of stuff in there, he said, that they threw away. So he grabbed these two, two stilch chainsaws and uh, said I could have them. If I wanted them, he was thinking of me. <laughs> That's great. So we're gonna see if we can get them going. Who knows? Maybe they're burned up. Maybe the pistons and cylinders are all are all uh, burned up on them because they ran straight gas or didn't do the proper maintenance to them. Because this one does have a brand new air filter in it. All right. So we're gonna look at them one at a time. So let's take a look at this one first with the new air cleaner on it and see if it's got compression. I can generally tell that just by pulling on it. I don't have to put a compression tester on it. All right, it feels like it's got compression. So the next thing we can do is either check for spark or let's shoot a little dinosaur uh, juice and syrup combination in there, otherwise known as two cycle mix. Shoot a little of that in the carburetor, and that'll tell us that yes, we definitely have compression and we definitely have spark. If if it doesn't, then we'll we'll search a little further, check the spark. Get it, boy. Get it. All right. Got choke on, switches on. Uh-oh, not starting. Okay. Let's see if we got some spark. Let me put my spectacles on, that'll help. Everything's all blurry. Maybe we don't have enough compression. Can you see that, Mr. Cameraman? Whoa! Maybe I squirted too much of that dinosaur mix in there. 
And it also looks like it's got a brand new spark plug in it. That won't fit. Huh, it does. And a brand new plug, brand new air filter. So somebody was attempting to fix this. All right, let's tighten that back up. All right, so we know this one will run. That back on. Shut that on for a second. Now let's grab the other one and evaluate that one. See if that one's worth fixing. Same thing. They're both uh, MS290s, I believe. Yeah. But the air cleaners are a little different. So they're probably different years. This one's a little rounded and got more like contouring on it where this one's just flat. Oh, there it is. Another air filter. Looks like it's pretty new. Okay. Feels like it's got compression. That's another way to tell. Hold it by the rope. All right, same thing. Maybe I won't squirt as much in there. Probably like I flooded that other one. Oh, well, that one started. This one got a new plug in it too. That other one had an NGK plug in it. This one looks like it's got a Bosch. It's a little rubber guy for you. Yeah? not new, it's fairly new, unless somebody cleaned it. All right, so, looks like we got two repairable garbage pick chainsaws. Got slippers. Again, got some slippers. Uh, got himself a deal there. All right. So let's uh, let's concentrate on the first one. There's no gas in it. There's no bar and chain oil. Get it, boy! People ask me, they go, Terrell, YouTube fans in the comments I see, you live by a racetrack? No. Trailer park. <laughs> so a lot of times, it's just a carburetor. and the fuel lines. So maybe just the carburetor is, uh, all the little diaphragms and stuff in there are probably all hard as a carp. Now we do have a video on these MS290s on how to uh, rebuild the carburetor. 
I don't know if I showed doing the fuel lines too. Take this little thing off. Now, for those of you that don't know, but this little baffle here, it's got a little picture of the sun right there. So that's for summertime use. So what it does is it blocks this off. If you flip it around, stick it in like that, there's a little picture of a snowflake. And that's for in the winter time. So what it does is let heat from the engine pass through here to get to the carburetor. A lot of people don't know that because it's in the manual. All right, so I'm going to squeeze the trigger so I can get to this link. And you can see this link is just right here in the top of this trigger. You want to pop that out and give it a turn. You take the throttle link right out. Next thing we need to do is pop this out. This just snaps in. We want to pop that out and get it out of the way. You can pull that wire off of there. That'll help you get it out of the way. Now we can slide the carburetor off. And this should come with it. This is for your adjusting screws. This is your gas tank vent. There's no vent in the cap. It vents through here. That's your gas gas tank vent. Here's our fuel line. Let's pop that off. And we got lots of sawdust and stuff on there, so we'll take our shop air. Blow that off. Before we take it apart. And I want to take a look at this fuel line, which just pops into the tank on a grommet. But we need to take the fuel filter off on the inside. There's a fuel filter on the end of that hose. So I made a tool out of a coat hanger with a little hook on it. So I can grab that hose so I can get to the fuel filter. Pop that off. Now, if you got a chainsaw, you need to replace this periodically. Because what happens is this will get clogged up. As this starts to get plugged up, even though you got the right mix in there, if this starts to get plugged, it'll make the saw run lean. And if it runs lean, you're going to burn up the piston and cylinder. And the way this gets plugged up is, a lot of times, when you're cutting with a chainsaw, you're, this is all sticky because it gets wet around here and around the oil tank. And each time you go to fill it, over time, a lot of crap will get in the tank. Now this tank, surprisingly, is real clean. Usually I dump the fuel out and shine a light in there, and you'll see a bunch of sawdust and crap in there. So just remember that. Same with the oil tank. Now let me pull this hose out and take a look at it. Oh, yeah, here, here's the problem. See, it gets all dry rotted and cracked. So that's all that was probably wrong with this saw. Yeah, it's cracked there. Now chances are everything in the carburetor is probably hard as a carp too. See this hose here? This runs from here to the cylinder. This is what's called an impulse hose or a pulse hose. And what that does is that hooks, when you plug this on, that hooks on to here. And you know what's on this side is the fuel pump. This is, works the same as a fuel pump that's like on a lawnmower. Oh, I got a old fuel pump up here. I thought I had one up here. Maybe not. Yeah, I got one. So here's a fuel pump, a vacuum operated fuel pump. And this right here has a hose that runs from the crankcase on a lawnmower. And that crankcase pressure is what makes this pump. The same principle applies to this, that hose there. 
that's applying crankcase pressure to this side of the carburetor which has the fuel pump in it. So when we take this off, there's your fuel pump and a lot of dirt. That's what those little flapper valves are for. Same flapper valves that are in one of those fuel pumps. So there's a bunch of crap in there. Surprisingly, this screen is clean. It's not too dirty. Usually this is packed up with sawdust too. So this hose too will also get cracks in it. That goes from here to there. And if it's dry rotted and cracked on your saw, it'll do the same thing. It's not going to make that fuel pump pump the fuel out of the tank. So it's a good idea whenever you're changing this is to also change this, but you have to take a lot more of the saw apart to get to that hose. Because it's buried in there. But we're going to show you how to do that. All right, so we know that. We know that we need this hose. We'll put a new tank filter in. Where's my fill ups? Let's take a look. This little thing comes off. This little rubber piece. And let's take a look at the diaphragm. And it's kind of hard. Not hard like a carp, but it's still pretty hard. It's getting hard as a carp. Yeah, it's, it's not real pliable. So we're gonna need a carburetor kit for here. Here's our needle valve. That's going up and down. So this carburetor is pretty clean. Here's our adjustment, adjustment screws which will probably pull those limiting caps out of there so we can get at the carburetor so we can adjust it because these caps limit limit our range of adjustment. So we'll pop them out. What else does this thing need? It probably it probably needed a lot of work this saw or both of these saws. Probably more than they wanted to invest in. So they probably opted to uh, just buy new saws. All right, let's take a look at this over here. I can already see stuff go, going on here. And here, look, the bearing's gone out of the clutch. The little washer and clip are missing. The chain is rusted. It's all rusted. We're not going to sit there and try to free up all these links to save this chain. Garbage. The bar. The bar looks like it's seen better days. So. There's a bar and chain. All these fuel lines. Clutch drum. Oh, look at this. The clutch is all missing. All the shoes, the springs. No wonder they threw this thing away. The oiler. The oiler gear, that little clip is gone. That runs the oiler. The hose. The hose for the oiler right here. It's got a big cut in it goes underneath so the oiler probably wasn't working and it's got a big slice in it oh yeah look it's all chopped up yeah they probably took it somewhere to a repair shop after they tried to fix it and uh, they probably told them what it was gonna cost to fix and it would be better off to just put that money towards a new saw Luckily, I got a bunch of these saws for parts. 
so I might have some of this stuff used that'll save money. But we need to get to that impulse hose and that, and in order to do that, we need to start taking this wrap handle off of here. Pop out these plastic caps. So we can get to these screws. Get your T27 Torx. Start removing all the screws. There's two down here. Nice thing about stilts. They use all the same. Oh, look, here's another. Got one of these anti-vibe mounts is missing. Totally gone. All right, so we got this off. Screws. Here's the hose for the oiler. Hopefully I got one of them new. That just comes out. A little filter on the end. I don't, that's probably just some crap that it just grabbed as I pulled it out. Take a rag. Kind of clean around here. We don't want any more stuff falling in the tank. Yeah, that's why they opted to throw this thing in the garbage. All right, now we got to pull this off. This says top on it. This little stiffener for the manifold. This way they got this wire routed through here, this little maze. Pull that out to give us some room. Now we can push that manifold through there. And we need to squeeze this impulse hose because it's like on a grommet. That was the safety brake. Oh, I got one more. One more of these caps to release. This doesn't have a screw in there, so we need to push on this grommet to release it. Now we can pull this back and we can see our impulse hose here, which got a bunch of crap in it. A pair of pliers, we just grab it. You know what I'm going to try? I just got this from Dennis Cullen again, tarot fan. Check this out. This is a little magnetic light that you can put to any one of your tools because it's magnetic. So if you want to see in somewhere, thanks Dennis. I get tools from this guy about every week. See, now we can see right in there. Look at that, where that camera work. How's that Mr. Cameraman? Is that light helping? Oh yeah, he's shaking his head yes. Now we pull this off. That's the impulse. Hose. Now chances are this thing is starting to get hard and brittle. So if we would have replaced the fuel line, it would just been a matter of time before this would have started getting cracks in it. It starts sucking air and your saw isn't going to run or it's not going to run very well because it's not going to be able to pump the fuel, keep the fuel pumped up. All right. So, 
Want to make sure we don't get any sawdust in places it doesn't need. That's the problem with these saws. They're so dirty all the time to work on. Try to carefully get some of that stuff out of the way. I've pressure washed chainsaws before. The trick to that is, once you pressure wash it, got to make sure you get all that water out of there. And then run it to get it hot, and that'll dry it up. Alright. I can always blow some shop air through the, through here to blow out any crap that may have got in the, in the gas tank. Okay, I scrounged up some used parts and new parts so we can get the saw going again. One thing I found was a brand new old stock guide bar that I had that I had bought from Stens years ago when they were having a closeout sale. And I don't think I paid very much for this bar, but it's a good, it's a good bar. You know how you know it's good? Because it's made in Australia, mate! Carry out. So, got the bar, and it's a 3 8 bar, 3 8 chain, 66 drive lengths. So then I went in my used parts, chainsaw parts, and I have a 3 8 clutch drum that I put a wire through to hold everything together so, as an assembly. So we've got a new clutch with clutch shoes, the washer, the outer washer, and the bearing. Even got the little bearing, clutch bearing. The only thing I need is the clip, and I've got those clips. I also found an oiler gear with the little arm on it. And I found an anti-vibration uh, bumper, or whatever you want to call it, thing. Now, the only thing aftermarket Stens and Rotary make is the fuel line. So here's the part, in case you're interested. 13171. And I believe uh, Stens makes one too, but I don't have the number in front of me. But I do have, I don't know, I don't even have the, I'll have to get you the number for the, uh, the OEM part number. Also from Stens, this is a, a Walbro HD carburetor, because it says HD on it. So Stens makes a gasket and diaphragm repair kit. For the HD, it's a Wabro D10 HD, and there's the Stens number. And again, you can get all these parts from our friends over at ProPartsDirect.net. Here's the impulse hose, a new one. This they don't make aftermarket. Maybe, maybe somewhere on the inner screen they're selling it aftermarket. But the one I stock is an OEM Stilch one and there's the part number one one two seven one four one eight six zero zero those are the different model saws it fits a 290 a 310 and a 390 uses the same or an 029 or 039 same saw they just put an ms in front of it for those of you who don't know and i got a new oiler hose and that part number is 1127-647-9400. And we'll put text in the bottom for the, for the hose. The OEM hose number and the Stens number. I, I'll, I'll look that up. So that should be everything we need to get this thing going. Now I can put it back together. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put this little oiler hose in because that's pretty easy. 
pop it off the end. This is garbage. I'll blow this out, blow back through it. Just in case any sawdust got caught in this little filter that's on the end. That way I cleaned it out. We'll plug it on. And then that simply just slide it back through here into the tank. And with a little screwdriver, you just want to push the get the grommet to go back in the hole. Just make a seal. Try to start in the back to get it to catch and then work your way around. And try not to stab it with a screwdriver. All right, it's in. Now I just gotta feed it. Make sure there's no crap gets on the end of it. So make sure everything's clean. Let me get a Q-tip here and clean out the hole that I'm going to shove it through. We don't want any stuff getting in there and blocking it. Now I can shove it through there and then on the end of the oiler, which I'm going to clean that off too. The nipple that it fits on. Alright. Pair of needle nose to help it. Get on the end. Come on. There. Now we're on. We're on the end there. Right there. Fits on there. Alright, so since we're on this side, let's put the oiler gear on. Slide that in there. Got to put this on. It says top. Put that on. This is left handed threads. So it goes on the opposite way. And I believe that's. What size socket is that? Three quarter. A three quarter socket will work. I forget what it is. Metric. nice and tight. Now we can find the edge. You got to find the end of the oiler. That little rod that was on the oiler. Because that fits in this little notch. So mine is at the top. I can see it. And get that to lock in. Put our bearing in there. Come on, Mr. Bearing. There we go. Give it a spin, make sure it's all meshing. And we can put our washer on. And now I gotta go get a clip. All right, hold on, let me go get a clip. I like to use the OEM clip. Now I know this looks like a regular E-clip you can buy at the hardware store. I've tried them sometimes, they don't always work. So I buy the actual clip. There's the part number from your Stilch dealer. And in case you need that little washer, there's the part number for the washer. There we go. Nice, good, tight fit. All right, here's our a little bumper, a little anti-vibe bumper. Pop that in there. Even had the screw and the cap. Here's my impulse hose. Turn on my little handy dandy dentist light. So I can see. Now there's a fitting. You can see the fitting down in there maybe. 
Again, I'll take a Q-tip, try to clean some of that out of the way. We don't want any of it to get down in that little hole. It's kind of hard for the cameraman to see, but there's the fitting on the end right in there. Sure, if you're doing this yourself, you'd be able to find it. All right. New hose is plugged on. Get out my other handy dandy Dennis spider knife. All tools sponsored by Dennis. So if you notice, they call this a molded fuel line. It's got a flat spot on it, a little tab. If you notice the fuel tank, it's got a flat spot right here. So that way when you stick the hose in, you want that flat spot up against that little ridge. That way it orientates. The orientation of this is in the right, is in the correct position inside the tank. So they do that for a reason. So that flat spot has got to line up with the flat spot this flat edge here on the fuel tank because if you get it in wrong this hose isn't going to be in the right spot and that may cause a problem so again get get it started and then just pop it in and there's your dinner all right so now the rest is just the reverse process of taking it apart which you already seen. So to save time, I'm just going to go ahead and stick it all back together. But you saw the major part of it, what's wrong. And then we'll go over to Carbitrator. Turn my light off or I kill the battery. So let's get this garbage out of the way. Let's get anything out of the way we're not going to use. So we don't get confused. Get rid of all this. I'll put a new tank filter in, which I have right up here which I get from Oregon. The Zama Oregon tank filters. 07211. Or you can get the actual stilt one. But I've been using these for years. Haven't had any problems. So now we can look in the tank, make sure it's clean. If you see any crap in there from when you were messing around in there, let gravity, let gravity do its thing. Nice and clean. Where's my little, uh, I don't want to throw this away. Let me throw that away. Here's my little tool I made. So I can grab the end of the line. Pull it out. Make sure you got clean hands when you're putting the fuel filter on. It's got a quarter inch barb on the end of it. All right. Now we can drop that back in the tank, put the cap on. All good there. I just gotta pull our wires through. And then uh, pull on that. Get our fuel line through here. Let's get our pulse line. And grab that with a pair of pliers. Pull it till it snaps into place. Now I gotta get past this anti-vibe mount up here in the front. Just gotta force it, push on it real hard. You'll get it through there. Then again with a little screwdriver, kind of get it to pop up in there.
because it's got a lock, it's a little spot it's got to lock into. There we go. See, it's got to be all the way in like that. All the way up at the top. It'll pop, it'll click in if you got it right. And then your little cap, which keeps it from coming out. All right. So now our manifold is already starting to peek through. So we have to give it a little help getting it in. Be careful you don't stab through it with the screwdriver. Just kind of help it. There we go. There we go. Any kind of crap in there, you want to get it out. All right. We're back in. Okay, so now I'll put the wrap handle back on. It's a wrap handle. Yo, 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 it's Terrell here. That was my little wrap. I have relatives that are raptors. They've been rapting for millions of years. Those relatives of mine. I'm more of a mechanic than a raptor. I'll just leave the wrapping to the raptors. There we go. Oh. Missed. There we go. Now it's in place. He's a famous raptor. And the one in here. What happened to that screw? There it is. I know, I know. You should be using a tray, Carl. Yeah, I got them trays around here somewhere. Okay, get this one to line up. Now we can pop our caps in. That cap went there. And that other cap's around here somewhere, which we'll find later. If, oh, found it. It was later. He's a famous raptor. Okay, get this out of our way and pull this wire back through that kind of had a twist in it. It went right here, had a twist, and you got to shove it back in here like that and then this fuel line fits right in here it's got its own little spot right there so when you plug the carburetor on it lines everything back up we got to put our little stiffener back in
And we got to put this on, which says top. Okay, now we're all ready for the carburetor. All right, pants make a good rag. Okay, so, looks pretty clean in here. Not a lot of crap. A little bit right there. We had some sealer that just popped off. You probably missed it. There was a little sealer on that fuse plug. That could be a problem, so I chipped that off. Everything looks good. This has got a little bit of some crud on there. Take this little scotch bright. Get some of that off of there. Take some carb spray. Give it a little rinse. And then some light chopping. You don't want to blow it full blast. I want to check this screen. Dig that screen out of there. That's a screen in there. Just to make sure there's nothing underneath it. Give it a little more rinse. On the Directly on the other side, that little hole right there, is the tip of the needle. That's where the fuel comes in. So again, a little light, light air. You know what works good, these dental tools. I like this one, that's got that flat edge on it. You can pick up these at flea markets because there's some crap here and this works good for scraping that off. Just like that tartar that gets on your teeth. Chainsaw's got tartar too. It's called chainsaw tartar. Because there was some crap in there. Rinse that off again. It's almost like being a doctor. Except the chainsaw can't feel any pain. The only one that feels pain it's the customer when he gets the bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where the pain comes in. A lot of screaming, crying, wailing. A lot of, you know, having to console the customer because of the large repair bill. So, instead of scraping this gasket off, because it's intact and it's good, I'm just going to leave it on there. Just going to throw the new diaphragm on there. Make sure the cover's clean. And uh, put the cover on. It only goes on one way, so it's idiot proof. So you can't get it on the wrong way. And I assure you it's not going to leak because I didn't replace the gasket. It's going to leak now, Carol. You should have used a new gasket. If you want to take the time to scrape it off, you go right ahead. You don't have to do everything I do. Now there may be some parts left over. So whenever you do this, you always want to make sure that the parts match up exactly. There's no extra holes or holes that are missing. Kind of want to do that. It's got two of these gaskets in there. I'm going to use this heavy gasket material one. This one's more like a rubber. This gasket I will replace because there's a bunch of crap under here and I need to get that gasket off so we can get rid of that. And let me 
me get one of my little dollar store, hardware store wire brushes. Because that stuff was really on there, whatever it was. That all nice and clean. Okay. Got our new gasket. So I'll put on the cover. And is this the new one? Yeah, this is the new one. It just got dirty. I don't know. This is the old one. Where's the new one? What did I do? I lost it already. There it is. There. Come on, you. Yeah, here's the new one. Let's put all this garbage over here. We'll lay that the right way. Our screen. I'm going to put our screen back in. He's not putting the screen back in. I think I got new ones. Yes. I got new screens. Here's the wall row number. They come in a pack of 10, you can't buy just one. Unless somebody's selling just one. Put a new screen in. I make it look easy, don't I? Kinda stick it down in there a little. Cover on, screw in, carbon trader's ready. Now we just slide it on. Like I said, it'll fit into there, and the other one will fit down there. Push it on, put our little rubber piece back on here. This has got to go across the top. Oh, I know what I forgot. Let's pull it back off. Shove that back in there. I want to take those screws out of there. Those little caps. And they make a tool for doing that. It's got threads on it. You can remove them if you don't have this tool by heating up something round about that diameter, heating it up real hot, shoving it in that hole, and then let it cool down after you heat it. And then you should be able to just pull, pull it out. These are supposed to thread in there and they're left-handed threads. This one's not working too good. Really got to push to get it started. This one's not working. All right, so I'm gonna heat it up. So it'll melt into that plastic.
I gotta let it cool down. Let's see if that'll pull it out. Nope. All right. Pick tool. Pick tools next. Cause this this type of carver trader's got a little like bezel around it. Sometimes you got to get that little bezel out. It can be a little tricky. I know I've done it on some other stuff and they come right out, but these... You gotta dig them out of there. I'm probably gonna break this tool. I'm trying to get that out. There we go. See that thing? That'll pop out of there. Now we can get those limiting caps out. There's one. And there's the other one. Now we can make better adjustments to it if we have to. Took a little bit, a little effort. All right, so now when we put the carburetor back on, we need to stick this on first. I'm going to clean that out. I'm going to blow this out. So it's nice and clean. There's no sawdust in there when we stick the screwdrivers in there. All right, now I'm going to shove that on. Guide it through here. There we go. Now it's on there nice. Now we want to hook our wire back into that little spot. Shove that in there, and this is important. You gotta make sure that this clip is above. Don't let it get caught underneath there because it ain't gonna work right. Now we snap it back in. There's our choke, there's that, there's that. Now that looked like it got a little tweaked. I don't think I did that. Maybe I did when I was messing around with that wire. But there we go, there's our dinner. Let's put this on. And our two nuts. Of course I lost one. That's why you gotta use that tray, Tony. Yeah, I know, I know. You should use the tray. Then you won't lose all your stuff. All right, I'll find that nut. There it is. See, I told you I'd find it. It's more fun when you lose stuff. <laughs> no, it's not, it's frustrating. All right, now we can fill it with our dinosaur mix. Would help if I used the right socket, too. 5 sixteenths or 8 millimeter, whatever you want to call it. All right. There we go. All right. So now I'll go ahead and fill this up and we'll see if, like Elkskin says, you know what he says. I'm not going to say it because then it and stuck in my head. Got the fuel in there. Let's. Woo! Ah! Hey, dummy! Put the throttle link in, dummy! <laughs> Good thing we don't have to take anything apart for that. Getting ahead of myself. Put the throttle link in, give it that half a turn, and lock it back in. Okay, dummy. 
Fire it up. Fire it up. Let me choke it again. leaking. I got new ones. The oiler don't seem to be working. There's an adjustment here. It was closed. I'm going to open it all the way up. Let's put the air cleaner on. I don't know if I have a chain for it, but I can make one up. So I have chain on a roll. All the way down is choke, and I'm going to click it up one notch so it's on high idle, which is what you should do whenever you have a chainsaw when it's hot. It makes it start easier when you have it clicked up one notch. dying out. Man, that just rattled that eardrum. All right, I'm going to have to fine tune this carburetor a little. The screw that's always closest to the engine is the low speed screw. I had to open that up a little bit. And then the one below it is your idle screw. And then the one behind it is your high speed. Now as you notice, there's oil leaking out from under the clutch. So we gotta see what's going on there. So I'll we'll take this all back apart. Oh, uh, more damage that I missed on the oiler here at the top. The pump pumps the oil through and it's supposed to come up here. And this little piece here on the oil pump also got damaged. So it's oiling, it's leaking out of here. So I gotta find that part now. All right, so that means we gotta take the oiler off. And this cover Pop this little bumper out. Get this cover 
rough. All kind of rabbit turds in there. Get the spring off. So I gotta get this out of here. The safety brake band. Get that out of the way. And let's take the oiler out. Unhook the hose that we hooked up. This piece right here. Look at it. It's all cut through. So you just flip this up like this. And this comes out. It's got an O-ring on it. That's what pushes the oil from the pump through this passage here. Let me clean this up and see if I got one of those parts. And all these used parts I got. Oh, look at that. I found more stuff. Here, this is part of the clutch. That's this part right here that helped hold the clutch shoes on. So what had happened is clutch came apart for one reason or another and these pieces broke off and that's what cut through the oiler line and that other part I just showed you and then look what happens when stuff rattles around in there it actually turns it into like little balls like rabbit turds how'd a rabbit get in there Carol? I don't know but he got in there and he went potty. Little rabbit went potty. I'm gonna blow this out. Okay, well, let me go hunt for this now. All right, I found uh, another one of these on a, some junk parts I had, so we got lucky there. So let's start it up again and See if it'll oil this time. Junk saw resurrected. I'll make up a chain. Put the bar and chain back on it. Make a couple of cuts. And then we'll look at that other saw. All right, got it all back together. Got the new bar and chain on there. And crikey, look at it, it matches the color scheme. Crikey. Is that what you Aussies say, crikey? Tighten up chain a little bit, but yeah, resurrected it. MS290. Let's go see what it's going to take to get that other one going. So, to save time, I already pulled the bar off of this. I wanted to check the clutch on this one, and look, it's got a brand new clutch drum on it. And everything, I pulled the, the drum off and looked underneath and everything is good. So we don't have to mess with any of that. So it looks like it's just going to be the carburetor and maybe the hoses. So we already know how the carburetor comes off. So I'm just going to speed things up. I'm just going to pull the carburetor off and have it off already. 
So this MS290 is a little bit older model, probably one of the first ones when they made the change. Um, this part here has to be popped out unless somebody was in there messing around. No, see this one fits in there. It's got the little, so you have to pop this one out. And remember the other saw, the tank vent came over the top and was all incorporated with this. Here's the tank vent on this one. And all this tank vent is, is a piece of hose. Let me pop it off and show you. It's a piece of hose. And it's got two little set screws in there. So what it does is the air vents around the threads of the screws. And a lot of times this, you know, because it's a hose, like this one, it's already broke. So I have to make a new one. I'll get those screws out and make a new vent, a new piece of hose. A lot of times this will rot off and then gas will come squirting out of there and then the customer comes in. Hey, this thing's leaking gas all over the place. Well, they don't know that this little vent came off. So now this one's ready to, to come out. Let's take a look and see what's going on inside this carburetor. Might just have to put a kit in it. Okay, it's really not that bad. There is some crap in there. Not too bad. Let's check the, and I got my tray. Hooray, Carol, you got the tray. Yeah, I dug out a little tiny baby cow Kinda of sucky tray that we got from Kinda of Sucky. It's not that they suck, it's just they kinda of suck. Let's see if this diaphragm is hard. That's not bad. It's a little stiff. We'll put a new one in anyway. I got more kits. That's moving. All right, so why wouldn't this thing run? The fuel line, oh, that other saw, that's right. I got to put a new gas cap on that other one. Now there is some fuel left in here. Looks old. Let's get the tank filter off. the fuel line oh yeah it's probably bad look I can there's a wetness there's wetness around the the hose why is this hose wrapped somebody might have been in here that wire that hose isn't supposed to be wrapped around that wire yeah it feels kind of hard oh yeah same thing dry rotted hose all right so I'll put a new hose, and I got another new uh, pulse line, and I'll put a kit in this one, and then uh, that's all it should be to get this one running. So you don't have to watch me do all that, I'll just do it. Next time you see this saw, it'll be all back together, and we'll be cutting wood with it, and then I gotta call slippers and give them the bad news. You know what the bad news is? Stay tuned. All right, I made my new vent, gas tank vent tube. You can see right there. And replaced both hoses. Another thing I noticed, somebody had been in here working on this because the kill wires were kind of wrapped around the hose and it wasn't routed right. And I did notice that somebody had already removed the adjustment screws, those uh, limiter caps. I already threw them away, but they had removed them. So they were probably in there trying to adjust the carburetor, not realizing that the fuel line was rotted and that's why it was not running right. Another thing I noticed when they threw this away, they threw it away with a brand new chain on it. So again, another new air filter, Pretty new plug, brand new chain. 
but he said it was a big construction company, and I know how them big construction companies are. They, uh, they just throw that stuff away. The job paid for it. Don't run. What are we saving it for? Oh, and this little, this little thing is missing. I'm going to have to order one of them because I don't have any more of them. So I'll get me a new one. So I got our mix in there, our dinosaur mix. I filled up the oil tank. This cap's not leaking like the other one. So let's, uh, you know what he says. Shut up! There we go. Now it's pumping up fuel. Let me put the bar and chain on. All right, got it all back together. Let's see how this baby cuts. I do, I'm gonna pressure wash them. Then it'll look like brand new. Look at how this baby cleaned up. Look at it. Looks like new. Hit it with the pressure scrubber. The trick is try not to blow water into the muffkin when you're washing it. And the other thing is, blow it off right away and start it and run it to blow all that water that got in certain spots and then the heat of the engine will dry anything else. But man, look at this baby. It looks like brand new. I gotta do the other one. I gotta wash the other one. Man. Like brand new again. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Taro Fixes All. I'm Carol, fixing stuff pulled out of the garbage. Follow me with your garbage picked up lawn equipment on Facebook and Instagram. Come on. Come on, hurry up. Come on. Get out of that garbage can. Get over here. Follow me. Go to our web store. Buy uh, some of the products we got. T-shirts and stuff. We got all kinds of stuff. The T-shirts are clean, though. They're not dirty like this. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! You never called me. This is my saw. What? How is it your saw? Because this was the saw that I threw in the dumpster. You dug them saws out of my dumpster. I, I don't think so. It was probably like Ronnie or maybe Uncle Andy or even Skippy. You know, they're digging around in the trash. No, those are my saws. Yeah, well, how do you know? How do I know? Yeah. Because anytime I throw stuff away, I put a tarot sticker on there. Ugh. I mark my garbage like a cat marking its territory. Okay, well, you know, once it's in the garbage, it's pretty much fair game for anybody. No, those rules don't apply here at Grass Rats Garage. That dumpster's on my property. That garbage is mine. You watch too many crime shows. Uh, well, I guess there's really nothing I can do about it then. Yeah, there's one thing you can do. Oh yeah? 
Cop up 250 clams and you can buy it. I w wasn't looking to spend any money like that. I just figured if I found something for free in the garbage, I could flip it and make a couple bucks. Well, go dig in somebody else's trash. Stay out of mine. Okay, well, I guess I'll check somebody else's garbage. Maybe I can find something. <laughs> Bye, Tess. Go away. Should have never threw them saws in the garbage. <laughs>